So as you notice, the video is really long down below. Uh, you can see I, I have no idea how many minutes it's going to be once I finish it. But you probably don't want to watch the entire video about paleo history and stuff. So if you do want to just get the quick answer, just skip to the end of the video where I'm wearing a black shirt again. And then I'm just going to give you the quickest answer. So a quick disclaimer before we begin the video, um, yes, arrowheads have been found in every state, and they have been found in states like Idaho, Montana, Washington, Oregon, California, uh, but the main title of this video more or less means for every 5,000 arrowheads you'd find in Ohio or Missouri or Iowa or any of those kind of areas, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, Alabama, just the whole South in general actually, uh, every 5,000 arrowheads, you'll find about one per 5,000 in the Pacific Northwest or West Coast. So that's what I'm talking about, is, is why there's so few arrowheads here uh, in the, the western side of the U.S. And, uh, and, and what were people doing? Was there less people? Uh, why weren't they making arrowheads? And so let's dive into that. So we'll do a state-by-state -state basis, and we'll start in the northwest, and we'll move our way west, and we'll go across kind of like we're reading a book. So if we start in Washington, uh, of course, they have the glaciers, the basalt flows, the um, Pleistocene glacial till that has uh, covered the majority of the state, and they have a ton of volcanic activity. Uh, so they have a lot of reason why, if there was any early paleo uh, evidence of, of uh, people making tools, it would be either completely buried underneath glacial till, maybe 300 feet, or uh, it's also possible that they weren't able to inhabit that land because it was covered in glaciers uh, for a large part of the Pleistocene and early Holocene. So another video that I made, uh, I talked about where flint was located in and where good mappable stone could be found and why there was none of it in the Pacific Northwest specifically. Uh, and so that would be a really good reason for why you wouldn't find arrowheads is because we don't have any materials to make arrowheads out of. Uh, so that's the primary and first main reason. Uh, but then what about states like Montana, uh, which do have flint and porcelainite and uh, other materials and just tons of massive agates that you could make uh, arrowheads out of? Um, well, let's get into that really quick. Also, another thing that you should know is that interior people rely solely on hunting uh, and then maybe some river fishing in order to sustain themselves, but largely hunting is a huge thing. Uh, on coastal communities, people tend to hunt for uh, seals and mainly fish runs. And we can tell that the majority of people along the coast uh, and Oregon coast, California coast, Washington coast, British Columbia, up to Alaska, uh, they survived mainly on a marine diet. They have, I've personally stood on top of massive uh, shell middens here in Washington. Uh, and I've seen that, yes, these people are consuming massive amounts of shellfish and fish, which don't require uh, arrowheads in order to hunt. Now, seals, on the other hand, do. And so what they have done to get around that was they utilized bone tools. And if you know anything about bone, you know that if bone is sitting in salt water or the ocean or anywhere along the beach for 3,000, 4,000 years, it's probably gone, unlike arrowheads, which preserve. So most of our artifacts would be bone uh, if they didn't disintegrate. The same can be applied to the west coast of Oregon as well. Uh, though um, there were a lot of people living there, uh, most of their storage containers were made of wood. Uh, same with Washington, most of their hunting tools were made of bone. Uh, and what you can find a lot of uh, in the Pacific Northwest is you can find a lot of fishing nets, uh, weights made out of... Uh, of just regular cobbles that they pecked around or just pecked two chunks out of and they form this kind of groove act shake shape and uh, those are plentiful you can find those because people were doing a lot of fishing um, however uh, another issue is that our soil is very acidic uh, because we have all these firs and cedars and pines uh, which kind of deteriorate bones and any kind of shells that may have been carved or jewelry uh, or those kind of things that they would have been using, hence their marine lifestyles. So overall, you have an extremely wet and acidic place that is very hostile to wood uh, artifacts and bone artifacts, which is probably 95% of all things that these people would make, uh, was essentially just those things. And you didn't really have a need for anything else. If you had bone tools, like maybe like a bone comb or something uh, along that line, why would you need to go out and make things like flint? You had bone bone arrowheads, bone combs, you had bone, you know, fishing traps, uh, honestly anything. You could have many different things out of bone and it was very plentiful to them as well. 
I pretty much copy paste exactly what I just said for California, Juneau, Alaska, the coastal areas, and pretty much anywhere in British Columbia that's along the Pacific coast. Uh, acidic environments, pine trees for needles, wooden boxes, and uh, bone tools. So no really good artifacts on the coast that you can find. Uh, it's not disputed by anybody. Everybody will pretty much agree with that. Now when you go over the Cascade Mountains, and if you don't know the Cascades, pretty much split uh, the west coast in half, uh, and they have this really arid, dry region on the other side of it. Now, now back then, uh, thousands of years ago, uh, like 15,000, for example, which is where one of the caves in eastern Oregon where they found a lot of artifacts was, uh, it was actually a lot more wet, and it was totally different weather patterns, and it was, it was decently wet, and you had a lot of glacial runoff, and you had much larger rivers, and it was a really, really nice region, but Again, rivers don't produce the bio material, the biomass that you need of food to survive like salmon runs coming through the ocean. So these people did have to hunt and they had to hunt things that weren't seals where they would use bone hooks, but they had to hunt deer and, uh, and camels. And yes, North American camels, uh, camelops and uh, bison and other kind of animals, elk. And so what they did was they, they looked for what was nappable in their area. So in Eastern Oregon, over along the Columbia River Basin, uh, you can find uh, agate arrowheads and quartz and uh, those kind of like chalcedony. Um, but these materials make really, really tiny arrowheads from flakes. You can find them in those kind of areas, and they're relatively recent, within the last thousand years, those ones. But deep in the, in the now desert, what would have been more like plains and uh, grasslands back then, uh, people were using obsidian in, uh, in East Oregon, one of the other things is that East Oregon is a desert. Uh, so back then when it was a plains, the soil was a little bit softer, which means that during a rain, if you had a bunch of obsidian artifacts laying out, they would all get buried. But because it's a desert, they're just sitting under there. And there's really no telling exactly where they are. That's why you can excavate near caves or those kind of things and generally find some pretty good artifacts. But you don't find a lot of southern style artifact hunters on YouTube looking in East Oregon for artifacts. There are a couple uh, who, who go out and find stuff laying on top after a nice big rain. Uh, but it's never going to even compare or hail to the absolutely massive abundance of arrowheads in the Midwest. Uh, and the reason for that is because there's nothing to wash all those arrowheads out of the deep earth that they're now stuck in underneath all that hard and compacted sand and clay. All right, so either you've made it to this point because you watched my huge long rant about what happened, or you just skipped to this point. Either works. Uh, so what's up with all these videos? I'm just going to put a huge thing of thumbnails up here of people walking around, picking up, you know, 10 or 20 arrowheads in a day and go, yep, that was a pretty good day. And they all have the exact same accent too, uh, or, or very similar variations of that accent. Well, I'm going to tell you why they're all in that area. So most of the people who find significant quantities of arrowheads, usually big, long, beautiful, meticulously decorated arrowheads compared to other arrowheads maybe found in other parts of the country, uh, you'll notice that they're all along the Mississippi River Basin area or somewhere along uh, the Red River by Louisiana or some, one of those uh, south, kind of su deep south or Midwest states. Uh, from like Missouri south and let's put up a quick map here of the uh, the rivers and what the streams look like comparatively to the west coast and just put all the rivers up just for everybody to see and you can kind of make a quick assumption about why people tend to stay in those areas because agriculture is absolutely critically important to growing in population size and more people equals more mouths need to be fed more people are hunting, which means more arrowheads are being made, which means higher density of artifacts in one area. Uh, we look at sites like Cahokia, we look at places that have 20,000 people living in a native metropolis, uh, and you just have to imagine however long Cahokia lasted is that thousands and thousands and thousands upon tens of thousands of people all making arrowheads, or at least some of them making tons of arrowheads to be used, uh, they're going to be relatively cheap and they're going to be lost and it's going to be cheaper to go back to the market and buy some more arrowheads from the arrowhead maker, the napper, than it would be to go retrieve the arrowhead. Not only that, 
but you're going to have people going out really far to go get better hunting. So you're going to have a really wide dispersion of hunting because certain areas are going to get kind of raped um, in wildlife and, and animals because they're going to be over exploiting their resources. So you're going to have this huge circle in this area. And I'm, I'm telling you, if you're, if you're making videos where you're finding 20 arrowheads a day, you live in this circle. It's just how it is. And, I'm, and also, m the majority, the vast majority of artifacts that you'll find are from the period when these mega societies lived, uh, where they were fueled by agriculture, corn, squash, and beans, uh, which allowed the production of many more people. And so that is the main reason why there's so many videos of people making it look like it's as simple as walking out to a creek and sticking a stick in the ground and feeling for crunchy material. That is such garbage if you live anywhere outside of this very specific, unique archaeological area where you can find an extreme density. I mean, like, look at some of these photos. I'm going to put some photos up. You have to see how crazy these caches are of arrowheads. I mean, absolutely insane. Uh, and, and people, these are just spilling out into streams. Every time there's a rain, you go out into plow fields, and you just find you are loading yourself with artifacts, but they're all from the same age, roughly, about 1,000 years, you know, give or take. Uh, and uh, they're all kind of made by the same people. And so there's this illusion that it's, it's easy to find, but if you go to California, Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, Montana, Idaho, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, any of those areas, they just simply didn't have the agriculture that the people had in this little area. Because the soil was extremely fertile, they had a ridiculous amount of fresh water, and which functioned as highways that connected them to all different areas, and they happened to also live right on top of some of the best flint napping material, all these different cherts, flints, and just beautiful, beautiful rocks, and, you know, flint ridge, and, you know, just all these Ohio cherts, beautiful stuff. Not only that, but they also had a milder climate, and that contributed to them being able to go out and hunt more. They weren't limited by, oh, well, there's now there's 12 feet of snow and we can't move for half the year like you would in Montana. So they were out much more. People didn't really live in states that were harsh like Montana or those places permanently. They went up there north from places further south and hunted when the bison was good, and then they came down. So people were only ephemerally in some of these areas, and you're not really going to find many artifacts because there wasn't a lot of napping stone. The, the thing is, if imagine that you are a Paleolithic or Mesolithic or whatever uh, hunter-gatherer in Montana, and you have a Montana agate arrowhead tipped on your, on your you know, uh, bow or atlatl or whatever, whatever they used, uh, and you miss... It's these big, beautiful open plains, not these lush, deciduous forests. So you could see exactly where your arrow landed, and you'd go retrieve it. And if it was still usable, you'd use it. If it was broken, you'd refix it and nap it, because it's too valuable to lose stone. So it's a very seldomly that a native would leave an arrow just laying there, and they wouldn't really have much chance to lose it either because they would still blatantly see it sticking out of the ground wherever they were hunting on most of the west coast that was plains. If you're along the, the coast coast that was luscious forest and it was harder to find the arrowhead, they didn't really use stone tools as much. They used, uh, you know, adzes and stuff, but they didn't use stone projectile points. They used bone projectile points because stone was so hard to come by. So that covers the whole coast and the whole West Plains. There was no reason, um, to be honest with you guys, after the glaciers left and went north, there was no trees. You know, People want to say it was, it was forest back then, we chopped all the forest down. It wasn't. Once the glaciers receded, it was like a tundra up there, and there's really no reason to be up there anyways other than to follow game ephemerally. So that's the reason why uh, there is very few arrowheads for every 5,000 in the Cahokia general area, um, and I mean all the states in the general area, and the Mississippi River and all that stuff. There's like 5,000 there, and then maybe one for every 5,000 this way. So that is your reasoning, uh, and I hope that saves people a lot of time from wasting years of their life watching YouTube videos of people in Ohio and trying to go out and 
California, Oregon, Washington, anywhere, and, and really trying to look for stuff because it's just damn hard. It's thin and slim pickings.